segment on nutrition and fitness. If you're diabetic or know somebody that is a diabetic and they've been struggling with alternative sugar sources, this is the episode for you. And we are looking at what fruits that are readily available that you may use as alternative sugar sources so that you are able to better manage your diabetes. And to take us through this is Belinda Otieno and she'll be explaining particularly tamarind, dates and the jackfruit. We'll start with the tamarinds. So the, the tamarind, commonly known as ukwaju, that is the most common name that is available. So the tamarind, they have two varieties. There's one which has a sweet uh, taste, and there's the one which has a very bitter taste. So most common in the market for us is usually the bitter taste. They come in pods like this, so all you need to do is to peel out, uh, remove the peelings, and then this is what you'll be eating. So d depending on what you like, you can juice it, you can, um, all you need to do is soak, soak, soak them in water, and then you're able to sieve through, sieve, sieve them, and remove, remove, uh, remain with the seeds. So what you're getting from it is the pulp. So one thing that you need to understand is it has its natural sugar. You don't need to add anything, because commonly when you want to eat it, you've been sprinkling sugar on it. But uh, the dates is one, um, one fruit that is very high in sugar, and the sugar that it has has a very low glycemic index, meaning that it will not affect your sugars and especially for people who are diabetic so but, and and you see our challenge is usually to get uh, people who are diabetic off sugar because they still are uh, they, they um, over time your taste buds still tell you that you need to take everything with sugar and all that but we have other options because with the tamarind you can simply mix it even in your tea you can uh, mix it um, in your porridge and you still have the same taste only that the sugar that you're taking in is not direct as what we get from our table sugar so so is, do you mix the like no, the the water that you've sieved out of it is it the yeah. one that you put in the tea and the yes. and the porridge so when you sieve it out it comes like a pulp mm -hmm. so the, the pulp in it which will be part of your juice that is what now you need to mix in your uh, porridge or you can mix it in your tea alternatively you can still take it as your juice and it will still have the same effect. And then it is also rich in fiber, which is very important also for people who are diabetic. And also for people who are hypertensive, it is one thing that you can also still take it because, uh, uh, because it is also rich in uh, magnesium, it is rich in potassium, and it is also low in sodium. Mm -hmm. And you can also eat it as it is. You can also eat it as it is. Okay. Mm. What are Only that when you do too much of it, then you can feel it. Uh, uh, the numbness, eh? mm -hmm. and then uh, we have our option two, which is uh, what is uh, common also. This is uh, these are dates, but these are now are fresh dates. But you can also find the dates, the dried ones. The dried ones. Mm -hmm. When you get the dried ones, uh, we encourage that you don't overdo it also because it still has the sugar. But you can use like a handful of it into your your oats. You can mix it with your fruits. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 you can use it as a snack at the same time because when, if, as much as you're diabetic, you still need the you still need sugar in your system. So the only way that you can also try to incorporate it is to make sure that you're taking it. Other than taking a whole mixture of fruits, then you can use the dates. Mm -hmm. You can use the dates in it. So either fresh or you can use the, the dried ones also. And the sugar in it, and the sugar in it does not raise the no, sugar no, no. levels? It has very low glycemic index okay. that uh, does not affect your sugars or uh -huh. raise your sugars. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, what is our, uh, it is, it's always been there in the market, but most people don't know how to eat it and all that. Yeah. It's called a jackfruit. Uh, for me, a description of the jackfruit, it's in between a banana and it has a pineapple taste, and then it has a very rich uh, smell in it. So, and, um, so it is creamy, yellowish in color. It is eaten as it is. So the moment it comes from, it comes from, uh, uh, it's, more like in a, it's more like in a pod. Mm -hmm. So when you have a seat and it's ready to eat, then this is how it looks. So it, is come, it comes out sectioned like this. So this one also, it is the sugar in it is also very, very low that can also be helpful for people who are diabetics. Mm -hmm. And other than that, it also has enough fiber. It is uh, rich in potassium, low in calcium, and it's also uh, low in calcium and uh, low in sodium, which is also beneficial for people with heart disease and people who are also have uh, diabetes. Mm -hmm. So now, apart from mm -hmm. these three options, are there any other fruits or that somebody can take as alternative sugar sources? You see, all fruits have fructose. So the thing is, usually we portion our fruits if you need to take, say for example, a person who is diabetic, 
-hmm. There's nothing telling you that you don't need to eat your fruits because either way, the, what we get from the fruits, the fruit, vitamins and minerals, are very important and they, either, uh, in, they come in very small quantities that are beneficial to your health. So what needs to happen is whatever, uh, whichever fruit you choose, be it uh, a banana, be it an orange, be it a mango, you have to be taught how to portion it so that you don't miss out on the most important elements that come with taking the fruits.